This audio book is called Himalayan Adventures. It was compiled in 2013 and is narrated by me, Ken Albertson. Published by Adventure One Publications in Chiang Rai, Thailand. It is comprised of seven stories, all taken from the individual diaries of the explorers. Here is a list of chapters in their order. The list includes the title of each chapter, its length in minutes, the story's author, and the book from which it was taken if applicable. It also includes a very brief description of the author. Chapter 1. Over the Karakorums. 31 minutes, 15 seconds. By Francis Young Husband. Taken from his book, Among the Celestials. Francis Young Husband was an Englishman who lived from 1863 to 1942. In 1904, he led a British expedition to Tibet, during which a battle ensued. Hundreds of Tibetans were massacred by the superior weapons of the British, while only five Brits died. He later had a deep spiritual experience in Tibet, which inspired him to found the World Congress of Faiths. Not surprisingly, he would later regret his invasion of Tibet. Chapter 2 at the source of the Indus, 20 minutes, 37 seconds, written by Seven Hedden, taken from his book, Trans-Himalaya. Sven Hedden, who lived from 1865 to 1952, was an acclaimed Swedish explorer and cartographer who traveled in and around Tibet and Central Asia, probably more extensively than any explorer before or since. Chapter 3. Lhasa Beckens. 40 minutes long. By Regis Everest Hook, spelt H-U-C. Taken from his book, Lamas of the Western Heavens. Everest Regis Hook was a Frenchman who lived from 1813 to 1860. When a young man, he became a priest and was assigned to preach in China. Much later, after many exploratory journeys in Asia, he was chastised by his Roman Catholic church handlers for showing, via his writings, too much admiration for Tibetan Buddhist practices. Chapter 4. Trials in Tibet 22 minutes, 28 seconds From the diary of Akai Kawaguchi Taken from his book, Three Years in Tibet Ikai Kawaguchi lived from 1866 to 1945. He was the first Japanese citizen to travel to Nepal or Tibet, both of which were off-limits to foreigners. Before that, he arrived in northern India with no money, but was able to get to the foothills of the Himalayas. He traveled alone to Lhasa, but it took him four years to get there. Chapter Number 5 on the Roof of the World, 30 minutes, 44 seconds, by John Wood, taken from his book, A Journey to the Source of the River Oxus. John Wood, who lived from 1812 to 1871, hailed from Scotland. At age 22, he commanded the first steamboat to paddle up the Indus River. Chapter number 6, Nanga Parbat, Solo. 51 minutes, 29 seconds, by Hermann Bull. Hermann Bull was born in Austria in 1924 and died in a mountaineering accident in 1957 at just 33 years old. And the final story in this series is called The Final Assault. 34 minutes, 58 seconds, written by Edmund Hillary. Sir Edmund Hillary lived from 1919 to 2008. His affections for the region around Everest has manifested in tangible ways, such as building schools for Sherpa villages in that region. There will be additional biographical sketches of each explorer as part of the brief introductions to each of their stories. Total time of all the stories, 200 minutes. So here begins the introduction. 
It's no surprise that the Himalayan range of mountains have elicited awe from all who are aware of them. Stretching from the east out of northernmost Burma and southwest China, they wind through India, Bhutan, and along the entire northern swath of Nepal. The mighty Himalayas also comprise Tibet's entire southern region and go on westwards to northwest India and northern Pakistan, finally easing on down into Afghanistan and several other stands. All those country names and their border markings are human contrivances. The Himalayas existed long before humans put their boundary lines everywhere and will outlive our species by additional eons. Early work on the Himalayas began when the subcontinent of India, then a very large island, slowly moved northward across the Indian Ocean from its breakup, amicably we hope, from Madagascar and what is now East Africa. Ever slow and steady, those bazillion tons subducted under the gazillion tons of Asia, and something had to give. The mass of rocks pushed up became the Himalayas. Were it not for ceaseless actions of erosion ever since, the Himalayas would be more like a gargantuan elongated mound rather than the hodgepodge of peaks and valleys we see today. Nearly all of Asia's major rivers can call the Himalayas home. In no particular order, the rivers named Yangtze, Mekong, Salween, Brahmaputra, Sutlej, Indus, Ganges, Amudaraya, or Oxus, and the Yellow all originate in that mountain range. Two of the stories in this audiobook showcase treks to find sources of rivers, namely the Indus and the Oxus rivers. Those two stories are included with the five which take place in the 1800s. The other three from the 19th century describe explorations of other parts of the Himalayas. These five stories are about men who explore regions never before seen by Westerners. Those explorers, if you were to ask them, would readily admit that indigenous dwellers from those remote regions had been first to find those places. Then there are the last two stories in this collection. They both take place in 1953 and tell about the first men to summit particular peaks. One of those peaks, called Nanga Prabhat, was first summited by the Austrian Hermann Bull, spelled B-U-H-L. The story of Bull's ascent is the longest story in this series, at just over 50 minutes. The closing story tells about the first ascent of Mount Everest. It is taken from the diary of Sir Edmund Hillary, who, along with his friend, the Sherpa Tenzing Norgay, were the first men to stand atop it. There were other adventurers during those times who explored throughout the Himalayan region, so perhaps subsequent audiobooks from Adventure One will endeavor to do versions of those stories later on. And that's it for the introduction.